There we go. Hi guys. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hope you can hear me. Hope I got all this set up well enough. Uh, I do see that the light on the Instant Pot does appear to be strobing. It's kind of having a disco party. It's pretty small. I still might spin that. You know, no need to concern anybody. It's not haunted. It's just uh, lined up funny with the um, refresh rate of the camera. That can happen sometimes. Welcome. Uh, cooking? Yeah, we're doing the August baking stream. Once a month, I drag myself like maybe 10 feet into my kitchen, uh, slap on my Alliance apron, which is no longer available for purchase, and make something. For a long time, we were doing recipes from the WoW cookbook and the Hearthstone cookbook, but we've kind of like done most of them at this point. Um, and then for a while, I was trying to come up with like fun WoW themed names for the food. And we can still do that, but it started to feel kind of lazy when I was just making food and being like, it's, uh, I can't, I, don't, I got nothing. It's too early for this. So today, oh, sorry. <laughs> Gotta be careful with where you're putting uh, straws. Today I am making a cheesecake in my Instant Pot, and we're going to be making it a cherry cheesecake. Uh, I did not really fully settle on a recipe, but I did manage to find the Instant Pot cheesecake recipe I used last year that I remember working quite well. And from what I've read about cherry cheesecakes, there's two ways to go about it. You can either blend cherry pie filling and then stir some of it into the cheesecake before you bake it to make like a cherry swirl, or you can just have cherry pie filling and then put that on top of your cheesecake and go, yes. So um, my thought is, why not both? I mean, if I'm going to be making cherry pie filling anyways, I did not purchase pre-made cherry pie filling because I feel like that would make for a very short baking stream. Cheesecakes don't take that long. Um, so I figure we're gonna make the cheesecake. Actually, I should make the pie filling because it's gonna have to stir in the cheesecake. Let me look into what's, what's happening here. <laughs> um, also, uh, the crust, we're doing a graham cracker crust and I have graham cracker crumbs and that's all well and good. And I think I have enough of them. I do think I opened these like the last time I made a cheesecake, which was uh, a while ago. So um, it, they may, we'll see. I'll eat like a little bit of them with a spoon. And if they're just like really like cardboard and stale, then, um, then I'll see if I can brainstorm another plan. I don't have any, um, anything. The only thing that I have that I could really try to pulverize into a dust to make a cookie crust with is I do have some slightly stale snickerdoodles that might work, but that's a last resort because this will be much easier. Um, ahead of time, I have set out 16 ounces of cream cheese to come to as close to room temperature as I can get it. Uh, it's, they're two different brands, so they're just going to have to get along um, because I, I don't know. And then we also have two eggs. I was also supposed to let some sour cream come to room temperature. This recipe uses a little bit of sour cream, and I just didn't take that out. I thought about it, and then I was like, but then I'm going to have to measure it because I don't want to leave the whole sour cream out, and then I just got bored. Uh, Lost, thank you very much for the five month reset. Appreciate it. First, we make coffee. I've actually already had my coffee for today. I may need some tea at some point though. So the, the part of the, the, the cheesecake, the crust is one thing. Um, and I can pretty much, you're just pretty much just mixing butter and graham crumbs and like some other stuff, not very much other stuff into a, into a paste is the wrong word, like a very crumbly paste press it into the bottom of the pan, and then that's like the end of that. Um, I've never tried too hard to make cheesecake crust, and it always seems fine. The batter, we're pretty much just whisking everything together, and then you just kind of pour it in the pan, and then you kind of just like do the cheesecake. So we are making it in the Instant Pot, which means I'm gonna need to unearth. I have um, a special sized, I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> It's almost time for me to declutter my cupboards again. I buy things like ramekins and I go, I'm going to make individual quiches. And then of course I don't do that. Who actually regularly makes individual quiches? Some kind of put together adult. Um, I also have funnels, which I use just often enough to not get rid of them, but there's really no way to store them that does, isn't just louder than the sun. I know we don't commonly think of the sun as very loud, but I imagine if you got up there, it would be pretty noisy, I don't know. All right, so this, this bad boy, that's what I was looking for. This is a, I think it's a seven inch springform pan. The important thing is that it fits in the Instant Pot. We're going to use a combination of, well, I was gonna say a combination of a trivet and like a foil sling. 
I guess I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to fly my trivet. <laughs> I've been, ever since I got the air fryer, I've been making less and less things in the Instant Pot, and it's kind of just become my rice cooker now. And that means that some of the more specialized uh, accessories have just kind of gotten like, oh, there it is. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Um, also, balsamic vinegar. Oh, I forgot I had this stuff in here. Look at that. Um, sometimes we have very deep cupboards in this place, and they're not terribly useful. Like, the back of it is so deep that you can't really get things in and out of it very often. So whenever I have something that I'm like, I want to get rid of this, but I just want to make sure that I don't need it. I'll stash it like real deep in there for like a year. And then I figure if I didn't go for it, if I didn't look for it within the first year, then I didn't really need it after all. Um, but the trivet passes the test, so it gets to stay. Uh, also, I don't think I would have gotten rid of it. It doesn't take up very much space. But that's not what I need to do first. I need to figure out what I need to do first. How long is the cherry pie filling gonna take? I looked up a uh, cheesecake recipe. I did not look up a cherry pie filling recipe, but it's pretty much just like cherries and like sugar and like some cornstarch in like a pot. So like, how hard can that be? Ooh, I didn't defrost my cherries. They'll defrost on the stove. I just have a bag of frozen cherries. I think I have a bag of frozen cherries. Otherwise this is gonna be some other kind of cheesecake. What am I doing? Cherry pie filling recipe. Some people are very adept at typing on touch screens, and I'm really not. Even when it's on a more common form factor like my phone, I am very slow and very clumsy at texting on my phone, and I've just kind of accepted that if I just like mush my thumbs around on the screen long enough, autocorrect will figure out what I mean eventually. And then if it doesn't quite, I'll just send it anyways, because you know, people usually get the idea, and if they don't, that's just too bad. Cherry pie filling recipe, that's what we're looking for. Hello, Hazel. Good luck with the bacon greens from the Netherlands. Greetings. Sounds like me trying to find anything in my kitchen, too. I'm kind of itching for another declutter. I, one of these days, maybe on Monday, I feel like I want to just like pick a cupboard or two and just take everything out of it and just kind of wipe it down. You know, sometimes things get dusty in the bottom of cupboards or like a little bit, just tiny bits of like, I don't know, tea powder. And I want to get it all out of there and then just kind of organize things. And there's nothing better than taking a full cupboard apart and then cleaning it and then discarding all the expired stuff and then putting just the things that you actually like back in the cupboard. <sighs> so I am not making three pounds of cherry pie filling because that sounds like a mistake. The nice thing about doing the pie filling from scratch actually is I don't think I'm gonna need all that much of it really. Um, I think I might kind of wing it, you know, it's not, all I have to do is make it thickened with cornstarch and pretty sweet. I'm thinking like less than a quarter cup of cornstarch, but maybe like an eighth of a cup of cornstarch I'll start with a half a cup of sugar and then just the cherries and see where we get with that. I'm gonna wing it because I have a better plan. So I'll start with that because that might need to cook for a while to even get the cherries defrosted. Uh, my quantity of cherries, we have a pound. I have one pound of cherries. How much does this want? Four cups. I don't know, close enough. Um, should I use the whole bag? I feel like this is gonna make way too much. I just need to swirl a little bit in. I'm gonna want to have some extra though to like top this stuff with and if all else fails you can always eat it on ice cream so maybe I'll just use the whole bag but I do like them on my breakfast I make oats every morning and you can put like any frozen fruit that you want on there and then microwave them and it just becomes like that version you can have peach oats or cherry oats or blueberry oats <sighs> uh, dark sweet cherries great source of vitamin C I am going to whack the whole thing in a pot because that uh, takes one decision out of my life this morning. So let's do that. Um, I'm gonna use a pretty good sized pot Just in case this gets messy. I think I Don't I think I'm gonna be trying to reduce them I don't think we're trying to add liquid, but if I do need to add liquid, I think I also have some cherry juice Maybe not all of them. Maybe just most of them. Yeah, I'm gonna leave a little bit I'm gonna leave a little bit for me. So I'm just gonna put this on like low heat and see what happens. I'm not trying to burn them, but as they defrost, they should release some juice. Theoretically, <laughs> you know, on paper, they should release some juice and that should help them kind of like boil down into a liquidy, like I'm not trying to completely disintegrate the cherries. We'll do that later in a blender. Hmm, you know. Is the trivet best in slot? Uh, Lazy Susan's good for deep cupboards. This is true. This is true. Uh, for that to work, you need to have sprinkles at home and something tells me Hazel might not have that. Oh, room to melt some sprinkles and get that cherry color. <laughs> it's a, oh boy, get back in there. It's a callback to um, 
day. I once needed uh, food coloring in colors that I did not have, and on a baking stream I decided to separate out and melt certain colors of sprinkles to attempt to generate a, a there's a fancy word, something I can add to basically color the stuff. It didn't work. Uh, the colors were very bad and turned basically gray. But it was a fun thought. So that's going to heat up. Um, I'm going to need sugar, so we may as well just grab that. I'm also going to wash this thing because it looks vaguely dusty. It's been living in the back of the cupboard for too long. I was all excited um, about Instant Pot Cheesecakes after I made the first one because it was really easy and it turned out very nicely. And then I didn't make another one. I think after you've eaten one cheesecake between two people, you're like, you're kind of good for a while. You don't really, you're not in a huge hurry for another one. I spoil for a few months, which so better suit the taste of us undead. Do you want to eat rotten food? Is that a thing? I know that's a thing in, um, I know in, in Harry Potter at Nearly Headless Nick's birthday party, they had spoiled food because the smells were stronger so that the ghost could maybe get a little bit of it. I don't know if that's a, that's a wow thing though. Uh, <laughs> walk away for five minutes, every door in the kitchen is open. Oh yeah, I, I drive people nuts sometimes because I don't naturally have an instinct to close them, which you'd think I would. I can be very specific about other things. And I'm becoming more cleanly over time as I get older, but um, uh, drawers, I'll just walk away from the kitchen with like all of them open and it won't occur to me that anything's wrong. I've started to get a little better about these ones because I don't want like stuff falling into them because it frustrates me to have to wipe them out every week. But um, <laughs> the cupboards, you just, you know, when you close them, you're just going to have to open them again. Um, those are sweating, which is what they want. Let's turn that down a little bit, though. I don't want to burn them. Last thing we want is burned cherries. So I was looking for sugar. Um, I wonder if I should put together that crust. I don't think there's any harm in doing it early. I guess I was going to, I guess once I dry this, because I was just going to press the crust like right into the bottom of it, I think. Uh, Puma Panache, thank you very much for the 12 month reset. Happy one year. Yay for a year of Hazel. Uh, does Dalaran Brie count as spoiled food or was it Stormwind Brie? Um, I want to say Dalaran Brie sounds right. Maybe not. Where's your recipe from? Uh, we're kind of improvising a little bit based on a couple existing recipes. Right now I pulled up a cherry pie filling recipe from all recipes just to figure out what they're doing with it. And then the um, Instant Pot Cheesecake is from uh, PressureCookerRecipes.com, apparently. This is number 17, which implies that they've made 16 separate previous iterations of them, which is an, a, a dedication to cheesecake iteration that I can admire. <sighs> I'm so sad there's no blood gun this year. Yeah, I keep, I keep, every now and then it occurs to me that, like, I'll think about something like, oh, I maybe I should get some, uh, like a, like a bag for traveling, or maybe I should upgrade my laptop this year because my laptop is uh, elderly. And, uh, and then I think, well, why? <laughs> Where are you gonna go? There is really no reason at all for me to spend any money on a better laptop when I'm not going anywhere. Also, even when I am going places, I think it's probably questionable to budget um, editing laptop money on a laptop I'm gonna use like maybe twice a year. If I traveled more, maybe. But I'd really wanna be able to stream from it. And uh, I don't know how people stream games from their hotel rooms. They must have um, like portable internet or something because I've played on hotel internet before and it's not good. <sighs> Cheesecake is so mega god to your dessert, you can't change my mind. It's a little bit rich. I really like cheesecake, but I can't have it all the time. I feel like I, I enjoy cheesecake. It's like tiramisu. I love tiramisu, but after I've made one, although to be fair, when we make a tiramisu, it's like a, it's like a lasagna pan sized thing. But I'll make one and we'll eat it and then I'll be like good for like a year. Um, so yeah, I was looking at the crust. So basically I was gonna, uh, 120 grams of crackers. Oh yeah, I need to melt some butter and then just mix them together with a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of brown sugar. And then we're just gonna press that into the bottom of the pan. Uh, line it with parchment paper. Okay, I can do that. Ooh, I'm gonna need to uh, trace some parchment paper then and do some Snip, 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 snip. I will do that. Um, I don't know if I need to line this pan with parchment paper. It's like, 
aggressively non-stick, and the non-stick's in really good shape. I might just, well, well, that all, that does backfire on me like every time. Every time I try to skip some method or technique that's supposed to make this not stick, never works that well for me. <sighs> okay, those are a little juicy. Part of me wants to add just like a little splash of cherry juice. I can always remove some later. Um, also, I should figure out if this is any good. We've had this in our fridge for a while. Best if used by uh, June, but 2021. I mean, it has been open, but like, um, it's just, hmm. I mean, it smells fine. Let me drink a tiny little bit of it. Do I have like a shot glass here? <sighs> Take a test swig, yeah. Let's just find out before we put it in the cheesecake. Cause I only have the 16 ounces of cream cheese. And uh, if I ruin this, I cannot start again. Oh, that's nice actually. Why haven't I drank this already? It's quite tart. It's not a sweetened cherry juice, but that's nice. That'll work. I'm going to add like a little bit of it. Mm. Mm. Cherries are amazing. We had a cherry tree, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, we had a cherry tree in on our property uh, in the backyard growing up as a kid. And uh, I was really impressed because I think it was one of those things that we bought and put in when we moved in. And we kind of expected that it would like never actually grow fruit because they can take a few years to sort of mature and settle in. And we figured it would never happen. And it was like a pretty, you know, stubby little cherry tree. It wasn't terribly large or voluminous, but it did after a few years start making cherries and it made a whole bunch of them. And the great thing is that it was kind of out of the way. So our parents would never really get all the way out there to check on it. We didn't have like a regular harvest schedule or anything. So if you were hanging out in the backyard, just playing as a kid, you could just go see if there were cherries. And then if there were, you could just eat them. It was great. <sighs> Hazel, I'm going through medical withdrawal. stream has been a huge help to me at this time. Glad to have you here. I hope you feel better soon. Uh, do you still use the WoW cookbook? I do, I do. Um, I've run out, have I run out of recipes? There's probably a few um, of recipes that we haven't done on the stream because we've been doing bacon streams for a long time. So we've done most of them by now. But it is still an excellent cookbook. I should do, um, I should do the bread. I've been meaning to make bread. Ooh, there we go. I, for the longest time I was like, I can't make bread. I can't find yeast. There's no yeast left. How can I make bread? And then I eventually uh, solved that problem and found a place where I could purchase like a pound of yeast and I purchased it and uh, haven't made bread once. Maybe one time and I haven't made bread again since. It's just hard, especially right now when it's so, um, pardon me, it's so hot. It's going to be like 100 degrees here today in Portland. I am struggling. I am trying to get the bottom of this pan to just like sit flat in this thing. And basically it just sort of pinches in and pinches out. It's a springform pan. There's like a little groove for it to sit in. I'm just uncool. Maybe I should do it flat. Maybe I should do this on a flat surface. Just sit it all down. Oh, all right. Well, that's that's the meta then. That's I spent way too long trying to do that incorrectly. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna just like turn that up to medium and just let it kind of like hang out for a while. Um, we're trying to cook that down and then sweeten it. Oh, I should add the sugar actually. I feel like the sugar will maybe help some of the um, some of the juices kind of come out of the cherries. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's salt. I'm thinking salt. Oh well, <laughs> worth a try. I'm going to start, and I didn't measure the cherries, so there's no sense in measuring the sugar, but we're going to start with like a good quarter cup, because there's a good amount in here, and we're making dessert. Gosh darn it. So let's start with that, and just kind of like see what that does. I'm trying not to say anything, but I am wearing a, um, I am wearing an apron, so all good. I had to buy some yeast today. I've got some no-need pizza dough fermenting. Excited to test out my pizza stone tomorrow. Nice. Oh man, I am, um, that is sugar. All right, that might work then. I figured it might. There's some other other way. Ooh, actually, that is working. Um, some other recipe that uses that principle. <sighs> I bought pizza dough recently. Um, I was doing an online grocery order, and the store offered these like pre-made dough bags. It was just a bag of like uncooked pizza dough, uh, not like the the crust, but just like a lump of dough. And it was like four bucks. And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll buy that. So I bought it. And then I was go trying to figure out how to stretch it out. Cause you're not supposed to like roll pizza dough. You're supposed to like stretch it. And, uh, and I, I remember wishing deeply at that time that I, ha I was cool enough to be able to toss pizza dough. 
because um, that seems like a cool thing that people can do. And I didn't really manage to do that. I tried a little bit. I managed to not drop it on the floor. I mostly just kind of like stretched it out. Um, and that more or less worked out. Have I decided if I'm going to do a ring of um, paper? I don't have, maybe if I like trace around here. Do I have a pencil handy? I do have a pencil handy. I did not expect that to be true. Look at this. What a pretty pencil this is. This is a number two, like a whole pencil. It has an eraser. It has like a point. It's reasonably sharp. What are the odds of that? All right. Uh, so I'm going to trace around it and then I'm going to cut it a little smaller than the pencil mark because I don't want pencil in my food. And because um, this is the outside of the pan and I need this ring of parchment to fit on the inside of the pan. So I'm just going to inset it by like, I don't know, some, a little bit, not too much. All right, let's see. Let's see how we can do. If you had like a craft knife, then tracing this would be a much smarter idea, but um, I do not have a craft knife. We're just gonna have to make do. This does feel a lot like arts and crafts though. As a kid, I figured arts and crafts would be more relevant in my life as an adult. I couldn't really understand why grown-ups didn't just have craft supplies, because if you could make all of these wonderful things with like macaroni and with glitter and with cardboard and with glue and with fluff, why wouldn't you do it? Um, and then, and then I grew up and I just haven't really made anything because then I would have to like have it. As a kid, um, some family, I was at a family gathering that had like a lot of cousins at it. And we came up with, um, we would make like houses out of cardboard boxes for little people. And then we needed little people. So we, we made them out of like popsicle sticks and fluff and pipe cleaners and like some goo goggle eyes and stuff. And then, uh, and then they had like a whole society going on. It was pretty cool at the time. All right, that is an adorable little ring of parchment that fits right in there. I'm very pleased with myself. If I can just figure out maybe just like a nice, I don't know, like inch and a half strip to kind of wrap around the edges, which it may not need, especially because the edge of the pan is gonna pop right off of it when you release the springform pan. But let's just see how we do here. Um, that goes like most of the way around. I guess I need like a little bit more for the rest of it. I almost uh, procrastinated to the point of being late for stream today because uh, I had just logged on to my human priest and was like, oh, maybe I should like, do some emissaries and get some echoes and stuff. And I did some emissaries and then I was like, oh, I'm not getting any echoes. And I Googled it and I realized it's because I never got her her cloak, my human priest. I never got her her cloak because I figured what's the point? If I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna play it in Shadowlands where I won't need a cloak. And there's no sense in spending a bunch of time to set up now. It's not like I'm gonna do a bunch of dungeons with it. I already have a priest set up. So, but then part of me was like, but what if I just, what if I just put it a little bit? I was walking this morning and watching, you know, the sun and the sky and, you know, breathing air, the things you do outside. And I just had a wash of realization, you know, just rinse over me. And I thought, I am a human holy priest and that's what I'm going to be. I think that's just it. I think that's what I want. I think that's who I am on the inside. I think I will have a splendid time. I will have so many cute outfits. I'm gonna look so good. I also think I might, I'll have to look at the guides and what people recommend, but I might end up being a Kyrian human holy priest. Maybe, we'll see. It sounds like fun. And that's what games are for, is for having fun. Okay, so I now have my little prepared pan, very cute. Um, although honestly, the paper's kind of popping up a little bit because it's not very flat. I'm hoping that once I press the crust in there, it'll make sense. I'm going to now mix up my crust mixture while we continue to allow these cherries to kind of goo down. Actually, we don't need them to goo down all the way. Now that we have like a little bit of liquid and a little bit of cherries, let me see if I can show you what we're look looking, looking at. Not really. Um, we have some cherries and some liquid. I think what I need to do is I need to scoop out or pour off some of that liquid, mix in some cornstarch, pour it back, and then bring it to a boil to thicken it because we need that to be thickened. That's a very important. So maybe I'll do that. Um, I have cornstarch and I figure I'm going to start with like two tablespoons because you want it to be pretty thick. I'm not trying to make jello over here, but you want it to be pretty thick. So I'm going to basically grab like a little liquid measure um, and then I'm going to pour off some of this liquid. Just, just some. 
um, so that I can add in my cornstarch and like really mix it in here and then add it back. Because if you just like lump it into the big pie, it tends to just stay lumpy and it's hard to get it mixed correctly. Otherwise you'll just obliterate your cherries. So what I now need is a tablespoon plus a little whisk. Uh, this one goes with my electric hand mixer. However, um, I rarely use the hand mixer, although I might use it for today. This recipe told me that I should not use my stand mixer. It said that for the cheesecake, I should use my hand mixer because I want to avoid incorporating too much. Um, start with that. Apparently I want to avoid incorporating too much air. I don't want to make like a fluffy souffle style cheesecake. Hmm, no shadow anymore. Did I hear right? So I'm still going to like have a shadow spec set up. I will probably, that'll be my off spec. So I'll be able to switch if they don't need my heels in a, on a fight. And I'll be able to like go shadow for Torghast and for questing and whatnot. And part of that decision really hurts me because shadow looks really good and very fun in Shadowlands. It's like finally our time, but I'm just, I'm being called. The light is calling me. Go back to your gnome priest in no time. Maybe. Maybe. I do think I'll still keep the gnome priest around and do a lot of YouTube. Like if I'm recording like a video intro, I may use the gnome priest for that because she just fits better in a frame. <laughs> if I'm going to zoom far enough into the human priest to get her face to fill up a good percentage of the frame, I'm going to have to crop out like everything. All right. Inspiration for me to try new things and ideas. Cheers. Always, almost always a good idea. As long as you're not trying like uh, narcotics. <laughs> Everything else is more or less pretty safe. I guess maybe skydiving. Uh, Lost Mindoche. Is that what, how we say that? I feel like I'm missing something. Or Lost Mindo Cutting Edge. Uh, thank you for the two month reset at tier two regardless. Uh, let's see. I would just use caution with narcotic drugs. That's all. Um, <laughs> <sighs> Tried skydiving last year, it was amazing. Every now and then I wonder if I would enjoy it. And then I think I've decided, uh, no, not for me. I appreciate what people like about it, but I've never really been, I'm gonna um, stir with one hand while pouring with the other. I've never really been an adrenaline junkie. Like I don't even particularly seek out roller coasters. I'll enjoy them if somebody peer pressures me into going on one, um, but I don't really look for them for myself. And I feel like skydiving is just a little, a little too much for a little old me. So I'm going to be stirring and then mixing in my cornstarch cherry juice mixture to reincorporate it. And I'm going to keep stirring this to make sure it's like really fully in. So I'm not getting any like weird gummy lumps because I have done that. And um, I am the queen of accidental gummy lumps when thickening with cornstarch. I have made some very questionable sweet and sour sauces in my day. <laughs> so we're not going to do that this time. So that actually seems pretty good. I'm proud of that so far. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm going to need to figure out if the sugar content's okay. Um, if it's not, I can add more juice and if it's, or more sugar. Also, I spilled a little tiny bit. Are you up in your cooking skills today? Maybe, maybe. Um, in the past, I don't know if WoW's done this, it must have. Some games will have a thing where you're able to experiment in a profession, like do an ex sink some materials into an experimental cast to, to have a chance to discover something. I'm sure that um, like maybe Cataclysm Alchemy or something like that had like the discovering recipes mechanic in it. So I'm experimenting <laughs> to see if I can discover a skill up, to see if I can proc one. It's not a guarantee. Okay, so um, that's happening. <sighs> um, and then I'm just gonna cook this until the whole thing thickens which it's actually kind of doing already. This pot has like a very nice large surface area, which I find makes things happen faster um, because you don't have to stir it so much to get even, even exposure to all of the stuff in there. So that's already thickening. We can give it a little bit longer, but that seems pretty good. Let's taste it actually. Give me a little bit of a spoon and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this juice and uh, probably hot. Uh, Lost Mind O-C-E as in Oceanic, I see. Is that how I would say it though? Lost Mind O-C-E, like pronouncing the three words. Also, this is delicious. Excellent, okay. If at first you don't succeed, maybe skydiving isn't the hobby for you. Haven't been on a roller coaster since I was a kid. I'm not sure if I would enjoy them anymore. This past BlizzCon, I was at um, Disneyland uh, last year and I went with some people to, I went with some friends Oh no, I'm thinking of the year before that. 
I'm thinking of the first year I went to, to I think I went both times, but um, I think I, I went both times, but the first year I went to BlizzCon, okay, that is thickened. We're gonna take that off the heat and just kind of give that a good stir. It is kind of congealing a little bit. I may have overdone it with the cornstarch, so I'm just gonna add in a little bit more cherry juice and hope that I can mix that in. What have I done with my cherry juice? That's where it's gone. So let's just, uh, just a little dash of that and then give this a good stir and see if we can get to a more appealing consistency because while this has thickened wonderfully, I definitely overshot the cornstarch. I could have used half of it, I imagine. Um, for the cheesecake swirl, all we need to do really is, um, all we need to do really is blend some of this and then stir it in and then the rest of it can be topping. All right, that's starting to come back. We can always add more, more cherry juice. I wonder if I might need more sugar at some point. All right, that'll do. Uh, I Ray, thank you very much for the 14 month reset. Good morning, Hazel, good morning. <sighs> it isn't lost Mintoche. <laughs> I took a guess. There was a non-zero chance that that was a thing. I don't know. Okay, all right. Graham cracker crust. I need a bowl. I need a bowl. I am going to grab a scale so that I can measure. Um, I'm actually going to use both of these bowls because one of them is going to be for me melting butter. In. Actually, you know what? I'm going to melt butter on the stove like some kind of a smart person because it's very easy to melt on the stove, but I'm always like, I can do it in the microwave and I always explode it. So we are using, let me see here. Oh no, where did my recipe go? <laughs> Uh, instant hot cheesecake recipe. Come back. We are doing uh, three to four tablespoons of melted butter. So I'm gonna slap this on the stove. Move my shot glass so I don't accidentally slap that off the counter. And then three to four tablespoons. I have four tablespoons right here. So what I'm gonna do is just melt all four of it and then we're gonna add it very slowly until our crust comes together in an appropriate consistency. <laughs> I think appropriate consistency may be the struggle point for me today. Uh, this looks okay though. This, this actually seems to be doing much better. This looks like cherry pie filling actually. I wonder why people, um, if it's this easy to make cherry pie filling and the cherries were actually quite cheap, uh, frozen anyways, I wonder why people don't do it themselves more because like, okay, well it doesn't look good like that, but it, it looks very nice. <laughs> okay, so that we're gonna melt that on like low, medium, low, half heat. I am measuring with my handy dandy kitchen scale because that's just how intentional and scientific I intend to be about this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're measuring grams. We're looking for 120 grams of graham cracker crumbs. Slap this on there, reset. And also I should try a little bit of them because there's a chance that they are horrifically stale. You know, worth figuring out. <laughs> Uh, Nadia, thank you very much for the 14 month reset. Hi, Hazel and Chat. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. I'm off to a surprisingly smooth start. Since I consigned myself to using this camera for baking screens, they're much easier to set up. There's a lot less to wrangle and then put back because I'm not, I'm not using this camera on my other setup anymore. Um. That's just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna use that. All right, 120 grams, perfect, because I did not want to have to start obliterating cookies. At first, I didn't think I had any graham crumbs at all, and I thought I was gonna have to try to like overnight myself some graham crumbs, but the place that we ordered groceries from didn't sell them, all they had was cookies. So I was gonna have to like beat up some cookies. And uh, this way we can have our stream with minimal amounts of over cookie violence. Hmm. Uh, this is graham cracker crumbs used commonly to make um, cheesecake crust. I'm sure that they're used for other things, but I've only ever seen them used for cheesecake crust, and indeed that is the only thing I ever really purchased them for. So there's that, and then we've got our butter melting over there. What else do they want me to add to this? They were saying like a little bit of salt and a little bit of brown sugar. I don't know if it needs more brown sugar, but they're already pretty sweet. I'll add like a, a teaspoon maybe, or just like a little bit. I don't know, some. Um, 
And then that's pretty much it. You just, you're basically just pressing buttered cookie crumbs into the bottom of a pan. <sighs> um, now that I have my cherry pie filling kind of come together, just say that much. I think that it is time for me to consider starting my cheesecake. But I'm actually gonna read ahead a little bit because I don't remember how the whole pressure cooking business works. And uh, I should probably like figure that out before I get started. Hmm. <sighs> I always wondered what's your kitchen stream set up? It's kind of evolved over time. Uh, currently I have camera over here. I have a second camera in case we need to do a counter camera. They're both routed to a second computer. My old YouTubing computer. Um, last year, or 2018 I guess, um, in winter 2018, I built what is now my current streaming computer. And there was nothing really wrong with the old one. I was just kind of upgrading. So then I moved the old one out to my living room where it now runs baking streams. It's also a backup computer in case my main one fries and I need to keep making videos. And it, for a while, was like my recreational desk setup, but things keep kind of going on it. Um, some of our ports don't work anymore and it has odd issues every now and then. It's just kind of getting old and I've abused it a fair amount. So it may be time to replace it eventually. Hmm. Okay, uh, a little bit of salt going on in here. Uh, Debertos, thank you very much for the seven month reset. Love you, Hazel. Thanks for inspiring me to get good at WoW as a girl. Nothing, nothing holding us back. Uh, water bottle brand, I see it everywhere. So this one is um, uh, not sponsored. I just like them. This is Iron Flask brand, which is a, um, I think it's a Hydro Flask knockoff. Other, lots of people make them. It's just an insulated steel water bottle. Um, I like these ones because they're affordable on Amazon. I like the gradient pattern and they come with like the straw lid, which is important for me because I just want to like spill it <laughs> on myself every time I tip it. And it's very easy to clean. It's got like this big straw in the middle that just comes right out the top. It comes, that's like a bendy part. You can just separate it right out, clean it in the sink. Um, and that way you can have like a big heavy full water bottle and not have to, I don't know, tilt it or like, you know, I'm just very uncoordinated. If I have a chance to spill things, I will. So, I, uh, any, anywhere that I can reduce spill chance is usually for the best. So I was gonna read, I was gonna read about how we're pressure cooking. Cause I know I'm basically using the trivet. The thing is I'm not very good at the trivet. I think you're supposed to like, so it has feet on the bottom, but they're very short. That's not a meaningful amount off the bottom for something to be. So then you like rotate these guys down but then the whole thing just kind of like rock side to side. And that's kind of what I do is I will just kind of take the pot and I'll just kind of prop it up in there so that it's halfway off. And that's how I did it last time. And that's probably how I'll, do, how I'll do it again because once it's in the pot, it can't fully collapse, but it's also very unstable. I don't think I'm doing that right. Okay. So that's something. I think we're basically just going to, once we have our cheesecake mixed up and together, we are going to uh, pour a cup of water in, pressure cook for 26 minutes, and then let it release pressure naturally. And then that's it. Uh, hang on. Oh, I see. And then when you're done, I need to let the cheesecake cool and then chill in the fridge for at least four to eight hours. So we can't eat it today. I'm gonna have to, sorry, you can't see me, I'm off screen. Uh, you can't eat it today. I'm gonna have to bring it back tomorrow. Um, on tomorrow morning, we're, we're gonna do another WoW stream. And I just need to remember to, before I put the cheesecake in, to like blend some of that cherry filling and stir it in. I'm looking for a nice swirl. Uh, I am cooking it in a pressure cooker. Uh, it's quite warm here today, and I'm trying to avoid running the oven if I can avoid it. Um, so I am, uh, for this month, I knew it was going to be really hot. So for this month's baking stream poll options, I selected things that were no bake or appliance bake options and cheesecake in the Instant Pot actually works very well. So now basically we're actually getting pretty close. I figured this might be like a fast stream. We've only been going for 40 minutes. Although most things, I feel like most chefs or cooks or bakers or people in kitchens that use them can kind of like get something together in less than an hour. It's just me that takes two hours to do it while I'm streaming. All right. Um, I have my butter. It is mostly melted. 
I'm gonna just like pour a little bit of this in. It might be kind of warm, but I'll mix it with a spoon and see how much we're gonna need for this to really come together. And then aside from that, I can probably turn the heat off now. Okay, see if we can get this to come together into a crust. I can't wait to see how it comes out. I love my pressure cooker, never done dessert though. If you use your pressure cooker for a lot of like aromatic, savory things, um, like maybe you make curries and stuff in it, stuff with strong spices that kind of gets into the silicone seal. It's not a bad idea to have a couple of extra seals handy to switch out. We have like a set of three of them. One of them's for pressure cooking meat. One of them is for doing um, uh, desserts and one of them's for everything else. <laughs> so that uh, you're not just like, you know, putting curry into your cheesecake by accident. If you want to do that on purpose, that's a different story. So uh, I, however, haven't really been making anything aside from rice in mine recently. So not so concerned about it. Uh, let's see, Alex, thank you very much for the brandy sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. <laughs> Cake gonna taste real, real weird as the banana effect. I am so uh, specific about where I store bananas in relation to bread products. I do not want anything to be absorbing banana flavors unless it was intended, like explicitly intended. All right, I need to get in my hair with my hands. I find that this is always a little easier to do. I'm gonna wash them a bit first. The machine blinking back there. That is the, where we're gonna cook our cheesecake. Um, the light on it is just like the display. It isn't actually blinking in real life. It's just the camera refresh rate is um, interacting with the, the frequency of the light. Uh, it looks normal to me. It's just kind of strobing on screen. But yeah, that is where we're going to cook our cheesecake. So I'm just kind of mixing together with my hands. Um, you don't need it to become like full paste. You just need it to be able to be pressed into a form. I do think this needs the rest of the butter. So we're just gonna dump all that in there, put this in the sink, and then kind of let it cool down so I don't just put my fingers in hot butter. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. And then we can kind of incorporate that. That's much better. Mm. Haven't had cheesecake in so long, 15 or 20 years. It's nice for a special occasion. If you got any like birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate, assuming that you can have it. I know that not a, it doesn't fit into everybody's meal plans. Oh, um, or like dietary restrictions, that kind of thing. All right, that'll do. So I'm going to take my, my, my powder and I'm gonna just kind of pour it into the bottom here on top of this parchment that we've cut out. And then I'll just kind of use my hands to press it into the edges to form like a full crust. I didn't really check, it's now occurring to me, I did not really check the, um, what size of cheesecake this makes. I figured because I've used it before, and this is the only springform pan I have that fits in the Instant Pot, of course it must make the right amount. But um, this is a slightly smaller than the standard springform pan because it needs to fit in the Instant Pot. So if this was a standard capacity cheesecake recipe, then it might make too much, but this seems to be the right amount. Kind of pressing into the edges there. I think I'm, sh I'm sure that some of this is going to get caught outside of the parchment, but hopefully just the majority of it is separated from the pan by the parchment. That's kind of the dream. I need to get this off my hands. <laughs> banana cherry cheesecake might not be that bad. I feel like maybe having like fresh bananas on top of it would be good. Jackson cabinets fixtures countertops. Yeah, this place is a rental and uh, I think that they just took one template and copy pasted it 20 million times <laughs> into different into different housing units. I'm sure that it's like really, you know, just whatever was affordable for the landlord to, to come up with. All right, so now we have that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do? What do I? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take another appliance, actually. Let's grab our uh, little personal blender, which I don't have a better word for it. Um, it's not Magic Bullet brand, but that kind of like, you know, single smoothie serve blender situation. Because I'm never making like a whole blender jars worth of stuff. And in my life, I've only ever broken blender jars. I find this setup to be much better. But what I'm gonna do, we're gonna take this bad boy and I'm just gonna spoon in some of our cherry pie filling here. 
Uh, maybe scoop it. Maybe scoop it like a third of a cup or so. Because we don't need very much. This is not going to be a huge cheesecake. And the idea here... Actually, let me taste this again. Mm. Perfect. No, that's very good. It's a little bit tart, but I don't want it to be crazy sweet. The cheesecake's going to be pretty sweet. So just a little bit of that. I don't even think it needs that much blending, to be honest with you. It's already pretty smooth. But I don't want, like, lumpy cherries in the cheesecake. So I'm going to basically blend this up so that I have a cherry pie filling puree available to swirl into the top of my cheesecake. That was a sound. And see well, how we look. Mm. Gooey. It's a good thing it smells good. Because <laughs> it doesn't look good anymore. Uh. All right, that'll do. I will spoon some of that in for the swirl later on. We'll set it aside for now. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to get blending my cheesecake batter together. So essentially, I think I'm just going to use a big, big bowl and a hand mixer because it told me to and I am uh, afraid of authority. I have to listen to direct. Well, no, that's not true. I rarely listen to direct when I'm cooking, but, you know, it seems like a good idea this time. Okay. So I'm looking for the biggest bowl. I'm making the most noise. It's okay. It's daytime. <laughs> I'm allowed to make noise. Oh. I do one day very much look forward to the prospect of hopefully having a house of my own where I'm not worried about my neighbors hearing my noise. You know? Okay, so we are going to be mixing up a sugar mixture first. So we're going to be mixing up a little bit of cornstarch with some sea salt and some sugar in a smaller mixing bowl. So I'll start with that. starch. Must have something to do with how I pressure cook, but I've made this before and it turned out well last time, so I'm not too worried about it. Did I keep my sugar in? I sure did. I'm going to take a moment and just have some air because sometimes I forget to breathe when I'm doing this. <sighs> Looks good if you're a phlebotomist. <laughs> That blender sounded angry. They always do. They always do. Kitchen appliances always seem to sound just like a little angry. Um, particularly ones with like large spinning blades. All right, this bowl is going to be getting some sugar. We're get taking uh, two thirds of a cup of sugar. So I'm looking for the blue one. Blue scoop, blue scoop, blue scoop. Where did I, what did I do with it? I use my third of a cup measure more than anything else. I maybe it's, it must be in here. I'll have to do some dishes. That is not it. That's not it. <laughs> couple couple dishes. We got time. Eating crispy chili chicken here. It's tea time in the UK. Do you always have? And this is a very dumb question, and I apologize in advance for how ignorant this is, but. Do you always have tea at tea time, or is it just kind of like an afternoon light meal that does not need to include tea? How do you feel being a kitchen appliance? That's how they feel. I do think that I don't really treat my kitchen appliances with the same reverence and respect that I treat many of my other things. I think that I tend to be reasonably nice to many of my household objects. I like my furniture, especially if I bought it myself. Um, I just got a new little, it's like a baby filing cabinet but it doesn't hold files. So people on the reviews were very mad because they bought it for files and it's like not big enough, but I don't use, need files. I just needed like a little drawer unit that would fit under my desk. And uh, I got it yesterday and I'm so delighted with it. It arrived fully assembled. The drawers like have a little bit of resistance on them, but not too much so that you, they, uh, you gotta mean it to pull them out, but they're not just like drifting in and out and you can't slam them. It fits all of the things that I needed to store. So I feel like with those things, I take care of them and I expect to enjoy time with them over the course of my life. But with 
kitchen appliances, particularly like food processors and blenders and mixers, hand mixers anyways, I, I don't have enough faith in them. I've just burned out too many of them, probably through improper use, but still, I've just, I've seen too many of them die to really have that like respect for them anymore. <laughs> so, you know, they, they're here as long as they serve me and then they're out and it was their fault. Um, I didn't find that scoop that I was looking for. Oh, it's in the cherry cheese, the cherry, cherry filling pot, not cheese. That was really good. It's in the cherry pie filling pot. Oh, tiddly winks. I'm really sorry to hear that. Glad to have you here. When is the cake? Uh, we're not going to be able to eat it until tomorrow, but I'm going to get started mixing it up pretty soon here. I am assembling my ingredients for the cheesecake. I was going to say filling, but it's like the body of the cheesecake, the substance of the cheesecake. Oh, man. All right. So two thirds of a cup, this stuff, I'm just going to kind of shake level this. And then I'm going to be mixing this with Uh, two tablespoons of cornstarch and two pinches of sea salt. So I'm just going to assume that one good crank of this thing is like a pinch or so. One, two, maybe a third one just for good measure. And then uh, the other one I have already out here. I already have my cornstarch. Zephyrus, thank you very much for the nine month reset. Yes, queen nine month sub, baby. Congrats. Water bath your cheesecake. It's going in the pressure cooker. So it's kind of got a water bath going on. Um, it'll have, there, like, you add water to the bottom of the cooker just so that you don't, like, I don't know, explode it or something. <laughs> Bad things happen. I, when I first got the pressure cooker, I read through all of the warnings and all of the security labels, the cautions, and most of them were like, make sure it's wet in there. <laughs> you need at least a certain amount of liquid, otherwise it won't come up to pressure and it's just going to be real mad at you, so don't do that. Usually they're just like, don't put me in the bathtub. Uh, all right, one tablespoon. And then here is a second one. It's a cake sauna. Uh, make sure the air is moist or <laughs> explode. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. Uh, this is not really a great implement for mixing. Let me grab um, something else. I was thinking to myself, what would my life look like one day if I retired the baking streams? Like if after some amount of years of doing them, if we just didn't anymore. <laughs> because um, I'm often on the fence about them. I do enjoy doing them, but they're like a lot more work than a regular stream and they tend to not perform as well. So it's just kind of something that I do out of tradition at this point. But I feel like if I stopped doing baking streams, I would never bake anything fun. <laughs> I do occasionally bake off stream on my own, but usually I will not really push my boundaries. I'll just make something easy that I know I already know how to make or something fast. Uh, I don't think I would usually experiment because if there's no, I don't know, event for it, then I wouldn't really do it. Got my blue proto drake after 401 attempts. Congrats, scumbag. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but that is your name. <laughs> Congrats. Uh, making streams are the best though, wait on us for them. They are something else. We would need a mahjong stream. Yeah, maybe one month I'll do a baking stream, but instead of baking, I'll just like <laughs> clean my teaware or something. All right, so that is salt, sugar, and cornstarch. And we are going to now beat together the cream cheese briefly, add in half of the sugar, we're also gonna need some sour cream and some vanilla and also some eggs. So let me get those things ready. Uh, eggs are right here, cream cheese is right here, but the sour cream and the vanilla, I do need to fetch still. Um, also, if I'm using that hand mixer, I will need to find the, um, I will need to find the uh, thingies for it. The, the beaters, uh, these things. Ah! There we go. Problem solved. No matter how much I, uh, 
I clean out that drawer, like this miscellaneous tool drawer with like, you know, knives and can openers and pizza cutters and stuff, no matter how much I clean it out and like reduce it down to only the things I use really often, it's always a struggle to, to close it. Like I try very hard to have that drawer functional and uncluttered, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's just a lot of stuff that needs to live there. Perhaps I need a second drawer. <sighs> this place has so many cabinets and cupboards. I feel like I can't really complain about lack of storage space, but it doesn't have like a separate pantry or anything like that. So all of your food is also contained in all of the cupboards. Um, I was going to look for cream cheese and for vanilla. So vanilla is right here. That's easy. Um, and then we'll probably need the spoons for that cream cheese or pardon me, not cream cheese, sour cream. Um, this recipe uses some amount of sour cream. And I think I do have some, is that yogurt? That's yogurt. Give me a moment. Um, I don't need a whole lot of it. What is that? Oh, there it is. Perfect. That one's brand new. I was supposed to let that come up to room temperature, but I didn't feel like it. And I did at least the cream cheese and the eggs, so that's something. I have the sour cream, we're using half a cup of it, about 120 grams. So I'll just have that ready. So I think I'm ready to get this, get this party started. Uh, should I make like, I don't know how quickly I need to really get this rolling once, um, once I've started. It's not like one of those things that, um, it's not like one of those things that, you know, activates. I don't have like a raising agent that's going to start doing chemical stuff, but I probably shouldn't like, um, let's see here. I don't really know what I'm trying to show you over here. I just figured maybe you'd need an angle at some point. Okay. Cause basically all that's going to happen here, I think maybe I'll make a foil sling first. Cause that's how we're going to remove the pan. Basically what I want to do is just take some of this and then fold it into like a big long, fairly wide foil strip that I can just kind of have under the pan here so I can lift it out uh, so that I am able to retrieve my cheesecake later because it's kind of hard to grip these things. All right. Uh, I need my directions. It's showtime. Let's start with cream cheese. So we're going to put our cream cheeses in a bowl. And then we're going to be adding in the sugars and then the sour cream and the vanilla and then the eggs. Once we pour it into the cheesecake pan, um, then we're going to be swirling in a few spoonfuls of our cherry uh, blend mixture, which I will prepare over here. I don't have, usually when this stuff is cold, it's very easy to unwrap without like making a big mess, but it's warm now. So I feel like it might stick. Sometimes when I leave butter out, to come to room temperature before I make cookies or something like that. It will, um, if I think really far enough in advance or I just forgot that I had set out butter with the intent to make cookies, it'll come to like room temperature and be really soft and just make a huge mess on its like papers. All right, there's one. I don't see any reason why the different brands of cream cheese wouldn't get along, but I hope they do. Ah. My nails are just a tiny bit long and they make it kind of hard to do things sometimes. I need to trim them uh, on Monday probably. I would love to have slight like long nails because that gives me more real estate to paint them and do nail art, but like I just can't stand not being able to do stuff. <laughs> I feel like doing stuff has to come first. So we're just going to kind of very carefully break it up a little bit. of the sugar mixture ish and I'm probably going to need a spatula at some point let me do a little side scrape how much water is going in the instant pot one cup of water I'm just going to do that now so I don't forget <laughs> This is going into the bottom. Okay. And then we can add the other half. Let's 
it's not quite mixed. Let's do another scrape. Oh. Looking much better. I've been told that I don't want to over mix it. Okay. We are going to now add the sour cream and the vanilla. I know sour cream sounds strange for this, but you just have to have some faith. And hundred and twenty grams. So this is like about half of this really. This seems like it's gonna be much more than half. Hmm. Hmm. I should have waited. I mean, I guess I can still do that. What did I do? What did I do with my scale? Uh, let's see here. Scale. I'm looking for 120 grams of sour cream. Oh no. I didn't. I thought I reset, but I didn't do it. Reset. 82. 122. Okay, that'll do. Is that it? And then two teaspoons of vanilla. So we're going to add that. And then two teaspoons of vanilla. What if I just forgot? What if I went to all that trouble to make that cherry swirl and then I like just forgot to add it? That sounds like something I would do. One teaspoon. Ooh, splashy. Two teaspoons. And then I'm going to put the lid back on this so I don't knock it over later and then go, oh no! Vanilla is surprisingly expensive. Now we're beating in our eggs uh, low speed one at a time. I feel like I would almost want to beat them before I add them, but I'll just trust. I'll just have some faith. So there's one egg. scrape and then do one more Let's make sure that we're all fully in there okay and it's like don't over mix it so I won't do that and now we're gonna basically pour that into the pan and then add our swirl, and then we'll be ready to pressure cook. So I'll put these in the sink. Here is our little pan. Uh, it's very cute. I made like a little parchment, parchment thingy going on over there. I guess I can actually do. Um, there you go. Slightly better view. So I'm hoping that the parchment will be kind of held aside by the batter once we get more of it in here. Start with that. See what it looks like. I think I remember last time not kneading all of it, but like most of it, so some more. This is kind of awkward to do. <laughs> uh, oh no, I, I touched the edge of it. I'll have to clean that. I don't want to get that cooked on the end. Okay. in there. My hands are covered in cheesecake batter and I don't like it. Oh, all right. Put this in the sink. Oh gosh, it's on the floor. 
I can fix that. <laughs> I have the power. I have the technology. Okay. floor and off my hands and then um, rinse the spatula. I'm going to use the spatula to kind of like smooth out the top of it a little bit. We're also going to tap it to like remove some of the bubbles and then it's going to be stir in time. <laughs> Not the floor. Yeah, I, all right. So I just want it to be like pretty and things I make are often yummy. They are rarely pretty presentation has never really been my strong suit. I think it's because by the time I get to the presentation step, which is at the very end, I mean, that's cheesecake butter. Can't not like that. By the time I get to the presentation step, which is like the very end of the process, I'm usually like really over it. When does it go in the exploding machine? Very soon, very soon. Um, just wiping off the batter from the outside of the pan. So what we're gonna do now, take a spoon and a little bit of this like blended. What we did is we made some homemade cherry pie filling and then we blended it. And I'm gonna just kind of take like a nice big spoonful of it. I don't really know how to swirl things. So I'm gonna just kind of put it on top at first. Maybe I should have done it from the center. This might not end up looking very pretty I think what I need to do is just kind of go a certain amount and then stop. Yeah, we're just gonna stop. We're just gonna stop that right there. <laughs> there will be additional cherries for garnish, um, but I think I'm gonna add them like after the cheesecake is like ready to eat. I don't think I'm gonna try to cook them on top of it because that sounds like a mistake. So I have an instant pot. It has, um, it has, uh, one cup of water in the bottom of it. It has a little, actually see if I can show you. No, it's not going to reach that far over. It's got one cup of water in the bottom. I've got a little foil sling on top of the trivet. Don't worry about the strobing light. It's all fine. And we're just going to perch this in here, right on top of there. It's like right at the top of the pan. Make sure that our seal is sealed and uh, bring you back to big camera and what they want me to do uh oh it like came up to pressure just with the uh, I can't spin it it's like really at the top there. you need it to be able to close properly otherwise this is not gonna work hmm it is going to make that noise every time I try. <laughs> you can disable that feature. It's definitely disableable, but like, um, I haven't disabled it so far, so it would seem silly to start now. So, but that's the low side. Let's try to skew it over there. There we go, perfect. Okay, make sure we turn it to ceiling, and it wants me to uh, cook on high pressure for 26 minutes and then just let it uh, regular release. So high pressure, 26. And then I'm pretty much just going to let that do its thing. It's just going to make cheesecake. <sighs> do, 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 do. Well, every time that you're, um, every time that you put it on and off, which sometimes can be a few times if you're just like, I don't know, living your life and adding things, it makes like half the sound. 26 only? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, pressure cooks pretty quick. It's going to take another like seven to 10 minutes to come back to pressure. And it wants me to do that normally and not do a manual pressure release. So that'll be that. But I think now all there is for me to do is to um, clean up because after, even after it comes out, the only thing I'm going to be able to do is um, put it in the fridge because it's going to have to set. Um, I'll probably try it tonight and maybe take some pictures, but then I will have some tomorrow morning on the baking stream, or not on the baking stream, this was the baking stream, tomorrow morning on the WOW stream, um, I will, as is tradition, <laughs> have a little bit of that and then give you guys a live taste impressions and we'll see if that cherry filling thing actually worked out because I have no idea, I've never done that before. Okay, so 
putting the rest of my sour cream away, gathering some, oh gosh, <laughs> it's okay, it's Saturday. If we clean the apartment on Saturdays, um, I will probably just mop the floor this afternoon. I do like mopping, it's very satisfying. Um, especially if you've got like some nice tile that like looks really nice when it's clean. There's nothing like a damp, shining, wet tile floor. Okay, that one goes back here. Um, I know that I'm gonna put away the rest of my cherry pie filling. Uh, probably one of these guys. But I don't know what to do with the rest of the blended stuff. There's only like a spoonful or so. And I feel like this is gonna really congeal into like a weird lump once it like cools. Oh no, my I've frozen. That seems wrong. Can you guys still see me? Yeah, no, this doesn't seem right. Mm. Um, hang on. <laughs> yeah, ice mage. I just really needed to sort out what was going on in that cover. Let me see. I can fix this. When in doubt, turn it off and back on again. Works 10 times out of 10. All right. There are still spoons on my floor. I always don't mind me, I was just <laughs> taking the break to eat some of the extra. It looks like murder slime. It looks like I've tried to conceal um, a crime by blending up somebody. <laughs> it's delightful, it's cherish. Oh no, my teeth. <laughs> mm. Not a good look for your teeth. <laughs> Mm. I ain't gonna check myself in the mirror. <laughs> We're just about done for today anyways. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that would be actually, if you're looking for like Halloween-y sauces, or like something that has like a delightful taste but kind of like a spooky texture, it still has kind of like bits of sort of like cherry, like meat and skin going on in there. So I feel like that would be very good for like a Halloween party. Mm. Plus it's delightful, it's dessert, it's delicious. Delectable. Where did you get the apron? I bought it on Etsy like four or five years ago, something like that, a long time ago. The seller no longer sells them or indeed even sells on Etsy, but uh, definitely not Blizzard this time. Okay. A little extra cherry pie filling, which was so easy. Now I want to make a cherry pie. It might be my favorite kind of pie cherry or blackberry. There's a lot of wild blackberries or just like outdoor blackberries that are kind of coming into season right now. They're ripening and they're delightful. And uh, I see people picking them. And sometimes I'm like, I could pick enough to get a pie. But that sounds like a like a like like it would take some time. And uh, I don't know if I have the time to go. I mean, I guess I do. <laughs> if I have the time to play WoW, I have the time to go pick some blackberries and make a pie. It just sounds like a lot of work to, uh, uh, to do for something that's probably gonna be good. But like, is it gonna be really good? Is it really gonna be worth it? I used to pick the little baby, like the wild ones that grow in like those ground vines. Those used to grow around our property growing up. And my mom told me if I picked enough to make a pie, she would make the pie for me. And I was like, that's a great deal. So I used to do that every summer. <sighs> I like most types of pie. I think if I was gonna rank them. Cherry is up there. Cherry is like a top pie for me. Uh, lemon meringue also very good. Although I think I like the lemon more so than the meringue. I think I could just go with like lemon tartlets with just like lemon curd in a pastry shell and be happy with that. It has come up to pressure. Apple pie is nice. I like apple pie, but I don't think I like seek it out really. Mm. Married to pumpkin pie is my favorite. Cherries are lovely, but always expensive. I find they're not too bad, at least around here, if you get them frozen or if they're in season. Um, they were in season pretty recently. I was buying like bags of fresh cherries, but I don't have one of those like cherry pitters. So I couldn't be bothered to, to pit them by hand. Um, there's different ways that you can pit cherries, but it sounded like a, like a lot of mess and a lot of work. <laughs> have you ever tried a, what is that? A quince pie, a quince pie? I, don't, I haven't heard of that. Uh, is your state in lockdown? Kind of, yeah. Um, I'm in Oregon, so we're in some phase or another, I don't know. Uh, businesses are mostly open, but they require masks inside and um, there's special considerations for distancing. They'll only let so many people inside. Uh, you gotta stay, you're six feet away. Um, we're still getting about most, a little over half of our groceries delivered and they're just kinda not going to too many places. And when we do, we wear masks. 
and that's working for us. <sighs> quiche? I make quiches sometimes, um, especially if I have like leftover pastry filling. The second half of the pastry, um, last month I made that lemon meringue pie and I made two pies worth of um, pastry. And the second half of it I made a quiche with. Oh, it's a fruit, typical Italian pie, also known as crostata. I have not had that. It sounds delightful though. Add the lemon curd to the center of a vanilla cupcake. Ooh, now you're talking. Ooh, or um, you can put it on top of cheesecake. <laughs> I mean, you can put most things on top of cheesecake. Not that cheesecake needs the help, but like, you know, it'll take it. Hazel, I made your bean burgers on stream for us. Nice. Uh, it's almost, it's al uh, no, it's not. I was going to say it's almost lunchtime. You should care, but it's like 11.15. <laughs> it's a little early for me to be thinking about lunchtime. <sighs> I hope that turns out. I haven't done one in a while. It should. I've just, I've been on a lucky streak lately. The last couple of baking streams that we've done have turned out really good. Like the lemon meringue pie in particular was kind of challenging and it actually worked out and I couldn't really believe it. So I'm just waiting for something to go disastrously wrong um, because I don't feel like I've really learned all that much. In order to learn, I would probably need to be seeking out like new resources and techniques. Um, and I'm not really doing that. I'm just kind of winging stuff. Does cheesecake need oven? Sometimes. So there's cheesecakes that you make in the oven. Uh, there's cheesecakes that are no bake cheesecake recipes that you just kind of like set in the fridge. And in this one, I am making it in a pressure cooker. Interestingly enough, it no longer appears to be strobing now that we're on timer. It was just the off button that was strobing. That was strange. Same light. Put my pencil away. Have that ready for next time. And that one goes up there. This stuff comes down here. I probably don't need the recipe anymore. Can I cook and cheesecake in a crock pot? I'm using an instant pot, which is a brand of uh, pressure cooker. <sighs> West Coast and in Vancouver. I am from Victoria, but I am living in Oregon. I am living in the States. Uh -oh. go. I'm real excited to get the counters wiped down. That's always my favorite part. Uh, May Ophelia, thank you for the three month reset. Appreciate it. So first I've got some dishes over here. Might as well hang out and do them all. Uh, hour or two left to experience the wonderful zone of High Mountain. Anyone ever go back and watch the end of the cataclysm scene in Stormwind? The end of the cataclysm scene. No, actually, I don't know if I know which one that is. Uh, and Jasper, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. <sighs> All right. In California, what's happening? I've heard it's warm there. It's certainly warm here. West Coast is getting a bit of a heat wave. We are cooking. We're going to get to about 100 Fahrenheit today, which is like high 30s, like 37, 38 Celsius. and 17 outside of my house in LA. I have gloves for dishes too. Can't stand the feeling of wet food. Yep. That's why I got gloves in the first place was because I have a much easier time doing dishes effectively when I'm not feeling like grossed out by, you know, wet food in a sink. But then um, it's also, you know, helps keep your nails good for longer and it helps keep your hands from getting too dry. I have um, a little bit of eczema, eczema and it gets really aggravated by harsh dish soaps or any dish soaps really. So the gloves help with that. Plus I look very stylish and I also kind of just enjoy the magic of being able to have your hands in water but not have them be wet. Hot in the UK, but it's cold right down, thank goodness. Uh, you can almost cook the cheesecake outside. Oh man, that might work. That might almost work. I feel like at one point in my, in my childhood, I had heard jokes and sayings about how you could fry an egg out there or like on a car or something like that. You could fry an egg on the ash palt. And I feel like maybe I just dreamed of this or maybe I just daydreamed about doing it or maybe I actually did it. I have a memory of actually cracking an egg, cracking, cracking an egg onto hot ash palt in the middle of a, like a heat wave to see if it would cook. <laughs> just join, see Hazel doing dishes. Yeah, we're doing a baking stream today, but we're pretty much, we've crafted our cheesecake. It is currently, uh, magic's happening inside the pressure cooker. So all there is for me to do is tidy up my kitchen. I don't like the 
sweaty feeling of hands and gloves. My foot fun don't get too bad, but I also, um, I'm often not doing dishes for too terribly long. I tend to do them kind of off and on as I'm cooking. And then by the time that after dinner's over, half the stuff can go in the dishwasher. And uh, just a few things need, just a few things need scrubbing in the sink. So usually not enough time to get sweaty. Water isn't wet. It is wet, but with the magic of gloves, you don't have to touch it. You know you made it when you obtained the first four slot toaster. Welcome. <laughs> Sup, Wesley. I, um, that toaster was a wedding gift. I think it's the only wedding gift that we got that we still have and, like, use. Although I only really remember two wedding gifts. Maybe not. Maybe there were more. But, uh, my sister got us that toaster when we got married. And I like it a lot. It also, it's like a KitchenAid brand one. And it's red. And it matches my red KitchenAid stand mixer. Which is the one, um, kitchen appliance that is exempt from my general contempt for kitchen appliances. Um, I adore my stand mixer, and I treat it very nicely. Uh, does your husband play WoW? He sure does. Um, I think he's logged in right now. I think he's trying to figure out, I don't know if he's trying right now, but in general he's been musing about what he wants to play in Shadowlands. Oh, well, and the climate change is going to get worse before it gets worse. I mean, if, um, if hostile artificial intelligence wipe out humanity, then there might be a chance for it to get better. You know, the interglacial period might eventually end without enough greenhouse gases being re released that we can get back into the um, Holocene Ice Age. <sighs> Thanks for being so positive all the time. KitchenAid top tier. That was a Christmas present from my dear Specs. Very good one. I feel like we... Or at least he. I'm not a great gift giver. Um, I do okay, but I I don't have a lot of imagination. Um, and he has gotten me a couple of really nice gifts very early. And I think he's really he's really worked himself into a corner because I don't really like having extra stuff for the sake of stuff, so I need to really want it. And I'm at a point in my life now where if there's something that I really want, I'll probably just get it for myself. So we're kind of out of good gifts to get each other. But we hopefully have many more birthdays and anniversaries and Christmases still to go. Bit of a pickle. Maybe we should just focus on um, consumable things like uh, teas and whiskeys and stuff. Cooking stream, no AI talk. <laughs> I stress about getting people gifts. With my life the way it is, I don't really have to gift shop very much. I'm so far away from my family. I guess I, sh I could send them things for, for holidays and whatnot, but we kind of don't. It's just a long way to ship things. And when you're not around people all the time, you don't really know what they need. You don't want to get them something they already have. Um, so the only gifts that we really do are between my husband and I for basically Christmas, birthdays, and anniversaries. And uh, I think we've had a few where we're like, let's just get stuff for the pets. Let's just get like some treats for the dog and the cat. And uh, and then have a nice meal and call it, a, call it a year. You know, save some money. I'd rather not just get a bunch of extra stuff that I'm just gonna have to donate later because I don't actually need it and I don't wanna store it. Okay. <sighs> Can't fail with fish and plant things. <clears throat> fish stuff I feel like would be a very difficult gift to get me because um, you either need it, in which case you have it, or you don't need it, or like you can't uh, keep it, or you don't have space for it, or something like that. Um, I think maybe one year for Christmas, if we have a house, I'll be like, okay, so for Christmas this year, you're gonna let me <laughs> buy a really crazy, like 75 gallon aquarium and stand kit for some goldfish. And that's what we'll do for Christmas this year, is I'm gonna spend a bunch of money, and you're not gonna worry about it. Not that he does. Um, we're, we're, we're fine in that regard, but. Uh, I feel like that's that's the world. Oh, how long have you guys been married? We have been married for six. We celebrated six years, I think, last, uh, fairly recently, actually, in May. Oh, grandkids, and I have a wish list app I use that helps me send them stuff. I love not having to pay for shipping. That's handy. Can I have a slice? I am notorious about not sharing when I do baking streams. Bit of a legal liability. But um, not actually too hard to do. Cheesecake in general, even if you don't have the pressure cooker, Cheesecake is not as hard as it sounds. You basically, I don't know if you need a springform pan. I've always used a springform pan. But there's 
you know, you have like cream cheese and eggs and sugar and you kind of mix them up and you bake them and you're like, wow, cheesecake. <laughs> it sounds like it would be more complicated and fancy than it actually turns out to be. 75 gallons big enough for goldfish? I think so, yeah. I would do, you can do up to five if you're really keeping up on water testing and water changes. Uh, it might be more comfortable to do three. But yeah, um, we're talking fancy goldfish, short bodied goldfish. I wouldn't keep long bodied like single tail goldfish. Um, I wouldn't do like comets or shabunkins. Those are more like pond fish, but I would do like fan tails in that. <sighs> uh, congrats on six years, yeah, for nerd marriages. Have you ever made Basque cheesecake? Super easy, pretty good. I've never even heard of that. Uh, Adi is crispy even when you're on the other side of the kitchen. Why is that so satisfying? It's satisfying for me because I struggled with, um, with baking stream microphones for a long, long time. This is a Rode Link. Um, it's like an interview setup. So it's a, it's a fully wireless radio microphone. And I only need, it's only traveling like six feet. But I used to have, to, I used to be connected via cable and that's just not worthwhile when you're, when you're doing the baking stream. And otherwise I would have to just like shout in this direction and that didn't work either. Um, it's very, I like this mic a lot, which is good because it costs me like a lot of money. <laughs> And I only really use it for this and then maybe travel videos. Mm. One year, a friend who knew I wouldn't let them get anything from me got my cats $50 worth of cat toys for my birthday. That's fun. That's really fun. Favorite Instant Pot recipe? I'm trying to think of things I've made more than once. Um, for a while, I was on like a big mac and cheese kick. I was doing like an Instant Pot one pot mac and cheese that had like cream cheese and gorgonzola and um, basically like any kind of like a good strong sharp cheese that you can mix into it and that was really good and I would do it with like a little bit of steamed broccoli just to make sure that there was like some vegetable presence. <sighs> Have you ever done a pulled pork with jackfruit? I don't even know what a jackfruit is. I'm feeling very sheltered. <laughs> I'm hearing of all these foods uh, that I've never heard of. It translates to burnt cheesecake. You cook it at a very high temperature to develop a nice crust. Interesting. I hope that's normal. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, plans on ever going horde based on the storyline? Unlikely. I don't really, I'm not invested enough in the storyline. I'm not much of a lore wow player. Fried onions go great in mac and cheese. Mm. I do a thing, I, I need, I've been needing to make it. I, I buy sweet potatoes and sometimes I'm eating them all the time and then I'm buying them all the time and then sometimes I buy them and then I forget to eat them and they turn into like a little uh, art project. Um, but I'll do like a sweet potato thing with caramelized onions and that's really good. Hmm, I think, so that's gonna be another 12 minutes and then another like 10 and then it's gotta chill for a couple hours. So that's pretty much done. My kitchen's pretty much clean. I think I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I will update you guys uh, tomorrow on stream and then also if you follow me on Instagram, I will put some photos tonight on my story I'll put some photos of my Instagram story tonight when I actually serve this to let you guys know how it went. Uh, so I'm Hazel Nutty Life on Instagram, or just check back tomorrow morning on the stream and I'll, we'll have some of it. Thank you all so very much for joining me. This was fun. It, I, nothing went massively wrong, at least as far as I can tell. I spilled a little batter on the floor, but who doesn't? Uh, thank you very much for coming by. I'll see some of you tomorrow morning. I'll be doing maybe some beta leveling. I'm kind of feeling, if beta's up, I might do some beta as uh, the plan, but anyways. Thanks very much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.